YouTube chat here. Here we go. All right, wonderful. Okay, hello, good, good evening, good morning, good afternoon. My name is <clears throat> Chris Legaspi, and today is Tuesday, June sixteenth, two thousand and twenty. So today we're going to talk about some uh, color exercises, specifically how to uh, use two colors. Um, you know, one of the ways that uh, I learned how to uh, paint and finally learn and understand how to use color correctly was I started a process of, of painting with one color uh, known as monochrome, which is what we covered in the last episode. And today we're going to talk about the next logical progression, which is two colors. This is also known as um, duochrome or uh, complementary palette or near complement. Uh, so we're going to explore that a little bit. But but um, don't worry so much about the technical names. It's not as important. Uh, we're basically going to use two colors that uh, work well together, and that could be many, many different combinations, but I'm going to show you the most common combinations that I think are great for beginner painters, beginner colorists. So that's who this is for. And um, uh, if you're joining me live or watching a replay, I want to thank you for joining me. <clears throat> if this is your first time, uh, leave a comment below. Let me know where... You are located. Where are you calling from? Where are you watching from? I am uh, based in Thailand at the moment. It's 9 in the evening for me. I'm an American currently residing in Thailand. And um, what I'd like to do is uh, we're going to start. I'm going to share uh, some ideas, lecture a little bit, and then I'll do a quick little demonstration of this two-color exercise. And um, yeah, we'll take it from there, and then I'll, I'll uh, if we have if we have time at the end, we're going to answer some questions. So thank you for joining me today. And um, if you um, if you uh, are brand new and you're watching me for the first time, I have a lot of a uh, free resources, downloads, and videos and uh, lessons on my website, drawwithchris.com, and if you go to drawwithchris.com slash subscribe. You just click the downloads button in the menu. And you can enter your email and you can get access to uh, to several resources. Um, last week I put up my uh, digital painting brush pack. It's what I use for painting skin. That's mostly what I do is paint portraits and characters uh, right now. Um, so uh, you can download that as well, as well as um, other uh, handouts, PDF files, and uh, videos that I only make available to subscribers. So drawwithchris.com slash subscribe. Now, um, oops. okay, let's try and drop that there. Now, in the last uh, video, we talked about uh, painting in one color, so monochrome. And today, we're going to use two color. And this is something that I've uh, I have done my entire career. If you're new to me, I've uh, I've been a um, professional artist, working mostly in video games for the last twenty years, and more recently I got into the movie poster industry. So I've been working in digital mediums for a long, long time. I use Photoshop mostly to produce the work for my clients and for the entertainment industry. And, um, you know, I wasn't always a good colorist. Uh, in fact, I started painting a little bit late in life. Uh, ser seriously painting. I mean, uh, of course, I picked up brushes and oil paints and acrylics um, as a kid and in high school. But my serious study of painting and color didn't really start until 2010. And I was already working at the time. I was a concept artist at... Um, at a game company called Cryptic, which is in the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area, and um, 
You know, I had been working for many years, but uh, to be to be perfectly honest with myself, my color was was, was not very good. You know, I, I, I just kind of got lucky. You know, in, in the computer, you can kind of, you can use the adjustment layers and things, the various tools to kind of fake color. You know, so I, I was able to make colored illustrations. You know, I, I had to for my job. But I really didn't feel good about it. I didn't feel confident about it. And I had no idea really how it works. So, you know, comment below if that's where you're at. Maybe you've been drawing for a while or maybe you're, uh, maybe you're a professional or maybe you're a student and you've been working in Photoshop or Procreate and you just kind of like, you, you kind of, you can make color, but you just, you're not sure how it works. So that's what I wanted to do in this little series. Um... And that's my background. I, um, um, when I started to take col color seriously, I actually traveled to uh, Los Angeles to study with some artists in person, specifically Steve Houston and, and Nathan Fawkes, two incredible painters based in Los Angeles. Uh, so they were my two main influences and in how, uh, how I developed my color philosophy to this day. Excuse me there. And if you're a, um, uh, comment below if you're a fan of James Gurney, or maybe you have his book, Color and Light, or maybe you watch his YouTube channel. I was binge watching James Gurney today. He has a wonderful YouTube channel, James Gurney. Uh, his book is excellent. Uh, well, James Gurney went to the same school. He's from Art Center, which is arguably the top entertainment art school, design school uh, in the world. And it's um, it's where... Uh, Nathan Fawkes and Rob Ruppold and Steve Houston, many of the giants, at least on of the West Coast where, where I'm from, uh, Los Angeles, California, many of the giants, um, artists that you you know admire, work on the movies and the animations that you admire, they, a lot of them come through Art Center. <clears throat> so that that's a little bit of my, my background. It's not that important. Let's let's get let's get to the lesson. So today we're going to talk about. Two color. Last last week was one color, and now we're going to do two colors. So th this this makes sense. It's a logical progression. And this is how I was taught by Steve uh, Houston and Nathan Fawkes, how they were taught, and how uh, you know I always teach my students. You know, aside from uh, working professionally, I also taught at some of the top art schools in the nation. I taught at Noman. I taught digital. N Noman's a a um, visual effects school. Uh, entertainment art school in Hollywood, and uh, I taught there for many years, digital painting and character design. So, I, um, you know, I, um, I'm one of the few people that can translate, um, translate traditional, r real world uh, color painting, oil, watercolor, gouache, uh, into the digital world. That's why I'm so passionate about this topic. I love talking about it. And um, t to me, the, the the best way to learn is to go from a tone to black and white only to monochrome, one color at a time, and next, uh, two color. So um, this is sometimes known as a complementary palette because you tend to pick, and we're going to look at the color wheel here, you tend to pick um, colors on the opposite side, like red, green, orange, blue. Oops. Do that. Um, orange, blue, uh, yellow, violet, and so on. Um, so that's one way you could also do near complement. But um, don't worry about that too much. We'll talk more about that in other episodes. Um, I know if this is your first time, you know, playing with color, using color, the color wheel can just be like, it can be like a trigonometry or some complex math, you know, it kind of makes no sense, um, really, especially if you're uh, coming from digital art background. Um, you know, when you, when you learn to paint traditionally with gouache and watercolor and oil, you know, you, you, uh, you actually can... You, you have to buy tubes, you know, so you you have to, like, play with these tubes and interact. You know, you have to buy a tube of cadmium orange. You have to buy a tube of Prussian blue or cerulean blue, and you have to 
you know, m mix them around and play with them. And then, you know, you have limitations. But in the digital world, you have no limitations. So it's kind of like, it can get very confusing very fast. So um, that's just, generally you want uh, colors that are on the opposite side of the color wheel. So that's known as complementary or sometimes near complementary. And I'll talk about why in a minute. Um, and um, oh, also I wanted to define the word temperature. I'm going to say this word uh, quite a bit. And it has uh, many definitions. But uh, for the sake of this little lesson, we're going to say temperature is warm and cool. And what's warm? Well, warm colors are typically reds, right? F colors of heat and fire, red, yellow, orange. And cool, when I say cool colors, they're typically going to be th uh, the blues, right? Nighttime, ice, cool water, blues, blue, greens. Um, so when I say cool... Um, Colors that are, tend to have more blue, and I say warm colors that tend to have more orange, red, and yellow. Okay, so that's a brief definition of temperature. So let's let's move on. Now, why is two colors important? Well, you may say, well, of, well, duh, it's important because I want colorful paintings, of course, right? Well, that's you know, you you can get you, you can get beautiful paintings with very limited colors, and I would argue, yeah, uh, two is, uh, you know, using one. You can create a beautiful painting with just one color monochrome, but two gives you that extra bit of spice. And the reason is, the reason why two colors is important is number one, is it gives us uh, contrast, and number two is it uh, gives us grays, desaturated or muted colors. So what is contrast? Why is it important? Well, contrast is really how we build pictures grab the attention you know um, for example in in uh, value like we look at um, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger here from the Terminator look at how this gun right look at how that gun really stands out from the background and the reason why it does that why is it why it does that is because it contrasts in value and also a little bit of color you see that that little light shape of gun highlight contrasts against the dark background, um, and then obviously we have color contrast as well. But um, for for the purpose of this lesson and for the purpose of this subject matter um, um, subject matter of figures, faces, as generally what uh, what uh, I talk about here. And of course, this applies to landscapes. It definitely applies to rocks and trees. Um, but contrast is important because contrast allows us to communicate light and shadow. Generally, light is something that's uh, brighter. And by contrast, um, something that's a shadow tends to be darker than light. And we need that contrast of light and shadow to show form because we can't, we can't make 3D illustrative realistic, naturalistic figures, faces, and characters without form. We can't, uh, you know, it looks a lot better with the, the illusion of form. So we need light and shadow, and that comes from contrast. Now, um, as you get more advanced, you will, you will know that you can also show form with, with color. So that's going to be a whole other uh, lesson in the future, how you can, you know, make, make the make the uh, corner of a box you can do you know, let's say this is a let's say this is a box <laughs> right you can turn the box with contrasting values but you can also turn the box with
you can turn the box with color as well. But we'll, we'll talk more about that uh, later. It's just a kind of an ugly demonstration. And um, so that's contrast. What two colors gives us the ability to show light and shadow uh, in, in a, in, in a, in, and contrast. And so th th that's good. <laughs> that's good. Now, the second reason is we want uh, grays. Now, you might be thinking, well, what the hell? What, why, why do I need gray? I thought this was a, I, I want to be a painter. I want color. Well, gray, with, without gray, we can't see and appreciate color. Um, and um, really, the, the best artists, the best painters, the best uh, colorists, um, it's not pure saturated color that makes them great because anybody can really use pure saturated color, but it's the ability to make pictures with lower saturated colors or more grayed down colors. Um, that's what makes you uh, great. And that's, that's what, you know, in, in the natural world, most things aren't, you know, most, for example, a, a person is like a beigey pink orange, right? So on the color wheel, you know, people aren't people aren't here, right? They tend to be a person's color tends to be a little bit desaturated, right? More in these pinks areas. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right? Nobody is this color. So that's why a grays is important because. Without grays, without desaturated colors, we cannot see and appreciate um, uh, saturated colors. Uh, but, you know, it's more of a philosophical term. But basically, um, in, in a painting, you can't, have, you can't have pure saturation in your paintings and illustrations everywhere. Every square inch can't be 100% saturation, right? It would look like absolute absolute poo like like dog shit you know it would look like 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 a like a, you jumped in a candy store saturated everywhere it just looked like a hot mess but the moment that you can start to gray down your colors in an intelligent way um by using a compliment we'll talk about that next that's how um that's when your colors shine it's kind of like um I know this is a philosophical way, but um, you know you can't appreciate like uh, like like a sunny day. You know you you can't have a if if you have you don't you don't want rainy days, gray rainy days all the time. But when you do have them, right? Let's say you have one or two days where it's gray and rainy. The moment that the sun comes out, you you, you like really appreciate it, and that's kind of <laughs> kind of how I look at. Uh, uh, color. It's like you you just you want to kind of put put the audience in in a mostly gray world, and then when you're ready, when you want them to when you want to show them or communicate something, that's when you hit them with your with your high chroma, your high saturation. So think of think of um, saturation as as a as a cloudy day. Okay. Um, all right, so let's look at, well, first, um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to talk about um, how you can use color, um, just what I call best practices. Um, you know, probably, if you're watching this, you probably uh, um, knew uh, to painting, or you want to improve your painting, you want to understand color better. Um, so I've found some of the ways that just really make color easy, make my life easy to pick color is with these best practices. So f the, f the first thing is you generally want to, um, when you start using two colors, you generally want to assign one to the light and one uh, to the shadow. For example, like... Um, uh, orange and blue, like this Terminator here, or um, you know, uh, 
orange and blue is just a nice general um it's 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 a it's a wonderful uh palette to work with it's a true complementary palette uh red and green you know like if you're painting a christmas illustration you're painting a forest of mostly green pine trees and or green christmas trees and you want to put some red ornaments in there so that's a wonderful way to use uh red and green um oh excuse me um well or if you're painting um let's say you're painting a desert valley of hills and mountains um it's you know warm and orange and then you know your sky will be like the light blue so you generally want to assign um uh one uh to the light and one to the shadow and and you you want to be consistent so if for example let's say you want to shine like an orange street lamp right the warm ugly orange street lamp on your character you know you want to make sure that that orange light is consistent on his skin on his hand on his jacket or whatever so you want to make sure that orange light is is on all parts of the object on the ground or maybe there's a car or an object behind him so you want to be consistent and you know if your light's orange you're going to want to pick a compliment if your light's warm you want to pick a compliment for the shadow so blue blue violet would, would work great in that situation so um whatever in in your lighting scheme um decide what your light's going to be it's either going to be warm or cool so just pick a warm or cool color red orange yellow and then boom s stick to it and then use that for your primary lights and then stick a, a primary a cool uh to your shadow and okay so the next thing is a ratio so generally when you work you want um, your color to you want one of your colors to uh, be dominant take up most of the space and you want your other color to take up just a little bit of space um, for example Here's a perfect example. Um, this is a screen capture from uh, Raise the Red Lantern. It's a beautiful film, beautiful uh, color design. And uh, there's a bit of a transition here. But um, this is a nighttime scene in a cold environment. So everything's very blue. And uh, the scene is dominantly blue, except for these beautiful orange and red lanterns, just kind of little accents to show uh, this area. So this scene is mostly blue with touches of red and orange. So that, that's how you want your scene to be. Here's a screenshot from Mad Max Fury Road. A beautiful color design. It's mostly orange, actually. <laughs> Just a little, little bit of night scene, night scene blue to give you a break. Um, but here, this, this scene is dominantly blue. Like this wonderful, like uh, sky blue, cerulean blue, little bit of a blue green and just a hint of uh of red and notice all the beautiful grays here right this is a gray pink a little bit of a gray pink with blue he's mostly gray pink except for little touches of a little bit of saturation in him his face his character's face so that's the dominant ratio um so generally you want to use more and you don't want to be 50 50 right I'll show you a quick example of that. So let's say uh, we're gonna, we have a thing here. Okay, I think we can all agree that this composition is is quite boring, right? If we look at this uh, red and green, look how boring that is. Boy, but the, the moment we whoop scale down, now we are nice, right? Now it's mostly red and a little bit of green, right? It's already more interesting, or vice versa. Look at that. That now we're cooking, right? Now we're cooking. And um, Also, too, uh, in terms of scale, you want your color 
to be uh, dominant in saturation. So not just size uh, and how much you use it, but uh, in terms of saturation. Right now, both of these squares in our composition, our crude little composition, is extremely saturated. Right? Look at look at that. It's full chroma and Photoshop slider. We, we, we don't want that. What we want is we want to turn one down. Remember, gray makes you appreciate the world of color. So now it's already a little bit more interesting. Take it one step further. Look at that. Look how much more interesting that is. You can even bring a little bit. Look at that. That's a pretty, that's a pretty one right there. A little bit of uh, rule of thirds there. Of course, you can go vice versa. Instead of using a full saturated, let's use a dark gray down. Let's use a pinkish red. And then we'll scale the green. Okay, so a little bit more interesting now. So saturation is important. So ratio. So remember, assign one to your light and then use the, the opposite on the color wheel, the complement in the shadow. Make sure you're consistent throughout the whole image for your lighting scheme. And then make sure that one, uh, you use more of one than the other and uh, also that the colors are more gray down than the other. One is more gray down. Let's look at a couple examples real quick, and then we'll go to the little demonstration. Um, and uh, through these examples, I'll show a couple ways that uh, you can quickly use, uh, start to use two colors in your own work. One really easy way is um, to put, um, to put a... Um, a warm uh, subject or object in a cool world. For example, um, this is a uh, screenshot from um, God. It's it's late at night. It's getting late for me. Um, a, a, a Mel Gibson movie, Apocalypto. <laughs> oh, it's an excellent, excellent movie. Um, you know, a, a jungle. A jungle is mostly greens, yellow greens, brown greens. So um, it's dominantly green. So make your painting dominantly green, green, yellow, blue, green. And then boom, just put a warm object in it. In this case, it's a, it's a human being. In his case, it's brown. So this is a near complement. Brown is orange. So it's actually orange and green. So they're near complements. But this is just one quick way to do that. Put... put um, Put your character or your subject in in the complement. Put 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 a red man in a green jungle. That's one way to put it. Here's another um, from Life of Pi. You put a um, a a human being in uh, against the blue sky. You know that's a real real easy common example. Um, let's see. This is a sergeant. It's mostly gray. Oh, here's here's a sample of sergeant. You just put a warm colored human being in front of a mostly blue sky. Real easy example there. And again, notice the beautiful grays. Not really many saturated colors, but look where he puts it right at the lips. Gives you that pop, that nice beautiful pop. Um, here's another example. Um, this is a night scene from. Oh, it's, God, this movie, uh, 
children of men. It's a be- beautiful, uh, beautiful color design. But uh, it's a night scene. So in, in nighttime photography, the sky will appear very, very blue, like a saturated blue. So you put, you know, instead of you uh, doing the opposite, you put most of the, s- the sky dominates your picture, put most of an indoor world dominates your picture, and then you put, you put a little bit of the blue sky coming through a window. That's what this is. So uh, most of this scene is inside of a car, but the, the, the little bit, uh, the, w- the window opening shows a little bit of that nice blue coming through. So that's a nice, a nice way of putting a little bit of color in, um, in your work. Basically, make, basically, to start, make most of your painting monochrome. Make most of your painting monochrome, which is why, um, you know, I spent so much time last week talking about mon- the importance of monochrome. Make most of your painting monochrome and just put little accents of a complement in there and you'll be fine. And make most of your painting monochrome with smart uses of gray and then you can come in with a saturated red like this. Um, this is Judge Dredd. So look at the beautiful... This is basically green. A little, little, little bit of yellow, but that's a yellow green, right? This is a cool cool white ver- so this is basically a monochrome green color scheme you know if we did a study we could learn a lot about green this, this will be an excellent piece to study and um, um, you know the 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 color designer uh, the concept artist working on this they intelligently use just they made the the world green on purpose so you could put little accents of this judge dread of red. It's just a beautiful in, intentional color design. So, yeah, and, and basically make most of your paintings monochrome. Uh, start monochrome and then just add little accents of, of a complement. And that's, that's a great way to start using two colors. All right, so I'm going to quickly do a demonstration. Looks like we're still on schedule. God. Are we on schedule? Yeah, I think so. I'm going to break for some questions here, and then we'll go through some examples. So if you just joined us, um, we're talking about um, uh, today we're talking about uh, using uh, a two-color uh, painting exercise, and, and I briefly went over how uh, you know, what, what colors to choose, how and why they're important, and the function of having two colors. Basically, you want to generally pick two colors that are on the opposite side of the color wheel because they give you that nice contrast that you can play off. You can With that contrast, you can create light and shadow. And when you mix two colors that are on the opposite side, you get grays, right? Your colors come into the center of the color wheel where there are grays. And with grays, then we can really start to to really start to show off our, our color because uh, real, col- real color happens when we surround it with grays. Colors, colors exist in, in a world of gray. Colors are appreciated in, in a gray world. So that's a brief summary of where we're at now. Let me see if I can um, bring up the little chat window here. Okay, cool. Looks like I got some some questions. Oh, and by the way, um, um, if you just joined us and you're new to me, you can um, download all of my uh, brushes and my skin color pack on my website, www.drawwithchris.com slash subscribe. And, you know, I also have other videos and lessons. And um, I also email um, uh, content and resources to email subscribers that I don't make public. So um, you can just go to drawwithchris.com slash subscribe. You can enter your email here. You can get access to the brush pack and uh, uh, other resources as well. And I'm going to put everything. Excuse me there. I'm trying to I need to get a new tablet here. My God. Okay. And I'm going to put uh, this image and the other images I mentioned in this episode on, on this page. I'm still working on it now. Sorry for those of you who have logged in recently. Um, so you'll have access to um, to this demo and some of the reference that I used in case you want to follow along later. 
Okay. Um, and I'm gonna. I'm going to um, answer your questions at the end. Um, and yes, uh, um, this stream is on my YouTube channel, so it'll be archived automatically on my YouTube channel. All right, so thank you for joining me. Let's get on with the little demonstration here. I'm going to try to keep this within an hour. Hopefully, I, I never succeed. I always go over. I don't know why I always go over. Comment below if you have never seen Terminator 2. Um, I just rewatched it recently. Terminator 2 Judgment Days made in 1994, I believe. It's made by James Cameron. And by the way, for you movie buffs out there, uh, James Cameron is actually can draw. I don't know if you guys ever seen James Cameron. He's a director of Avatar and terminator and a bunch of other other stuff uh titanic he can actually draw i don't know if you guys have ever seen james cameron's sketches um but he's a he's a wonderful artist actually that's why his movies are so artistically well done um so terminator is great to study for uh color and composition Well, let me bring in a couple examples. I think it might be helpful if I bring in a couple examples. Um, here's one. This is from, let's bring up two examples. They're pretty much the same color. These are both from uh, Wreck-It Ralph. Comment below if you have not seen Wreck-It Ralph. I think it's very good in my opinion. Wreck-It Ralph. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. So the first thing that, let me bring up my notes here. When you're doing these studies, when you're doing this exercise, exercise at home and you, uh, you, know, you want to uh, study um, uh, movie screen caps or maybe you want to study photography, maybe you're a photographer or a master artist, I'm going to do master artists and uh, other lessons as well. Uh, definitely, uh, the, the, in my opinion, the best, way to, the best way to learn color is just copying other great painters. Uh, that's what uh, Nathan Fox and James... Uh, Steve Houston uh, all taught me. Um, so uh, now, um, be, before we begin, I want to just briefly talk about how, how to look at uh, images that you're going to study. You know, m maybe you're going to set up your own still life. Maybe you take your own photography. Maybe you're doing plain air. Comment below if you um, if you have tried plain air, either with traditional. Or with the computer, maybe you brought your your laptop or your uh, iPad and tried to do some plain air. Co comment below if you've done any uh, outdoor landscape painting. Um, but the first thing you want to do is ask some questions. Number one is what is what what color is it mostly? Um, number two, what is the most saturated color? Number three, what is the darkest color? And number four, what is the lightest color? So let's take a look at, this is um, a screenshot from Wreck-It Ralph. This is uh, the little girl hero character, Vanellope, I believe her name is. But uh, when you first meet this character, she's in a, uh, a candy world, candy cane world. So pinks, 
Pink's world. And look, look at her, um, her outfit. Her outfit is purposely green um, because, you know, in, in this scene, when you're introduced to this character, she immediately pops out. I mean, obviously the blue sky is nice. Um, but this one, you know, you could say that when I look at this, I see mostly I see mostly a field of pink. It's a little too big there. You know. And um, just a touch of green. I know that's the wrong green. I'm going to... Uh, Okay. Now you could argue that most of the real estate is the sky, but the sky is such a pale green. Um, yeah, actually, you know, I think it's fair to say that um, in this one, that green is the dominant. It's close. It's about like a 60-40, actually. It's a little too saturated. There we go. It's better. <laughs> so that's what I see. How much real estate this thing takes up. Um, that's an important thing to ask. Um, let's look at one more example of scale. Okay. Um, oh, uh, Wyeth. This is uh, Andrew Wyeth. Um, NC Wyeth, excuse me. This one is mostly dark brown. See, brown, even this orange flame, orange is uh, light brown. Uh, brown is dark orange. So this is mostly brown, and it has a nice uh, field of uh, blue. Now, what's the brightest color in here? It's this thing right here. What's the most saturated? Now you could argue it's the blue. I would say, yeah, the blue is the most saturated. And um, the darkest is this dark field of brown, this nighttime brown. It actually will, will become like a violet in some areas because um, um, to mix this color in traditional paint, you're going to need, uh, you're going to take this blue. You probably use burnt umber quite a bit. Burnt umber is a dark, dark brown. Burnt umber, dark, dark brown plus uh, blue, maybe a touch of a, of a green or black, I'm not sure. Probably use a little bit of black. And uh, ivory black is a commonly used black uh, in oil paint or traditional media, and it has, it's not pure black, it has some green. Um, again, the second question is, uh, what are the, um, the gradations? How does the color move? Let's take a look at... Uh, this is um, David Grove. David Grove is an absolute legend, one of the most successful movie poster artists of all time. Um, he's, I believe he was, while he was alive, he was the highest paid movie poster artist while he's alive. Um, late 60s, I believe, mid 70s, or late 70s, around there. I haven't read, properly finished his book, but uh, wildly successful. Um, and he's known for having these beautiful limited palette color schemes, specifically uh, brown and blue, burnt sienna specifically. To me, burnt sienna ultramarine blue is like 
is 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 my go-to palette but we'll talk more about that when i get to the traditional lesson um now how how did the colors move let's when i say that what, what are the gradations how do they move so if we look at this shape of blue right let's look at the shape of blue you guys see that let's bring this into photoshop here I mean, you could, if you were to like do copies of David Grove for a year, you would be, um, you would learn way more about color than, um, than most people. So there's a field of blue, right? Now, if we look at the top, Right, what's the brightest and most saturated? What's the darkest? The darkest is this area here. So that that's one form of gradation. It goes from light to dark to mid-tone to dark. See that? It gradates in value. But look at the color. Look at how saturated it is here. Saturated blues here. And then it transitions to like this purpley, desaturated purple, and then down to like this gray brown green. It looks green, but it's actually burnt sienna plus blue. And then this gray purple. Did you see that? You see how the color moves? That's what you want to look for because when you translate that into your study and into your own work, your color will just pop and sing and sizzle. This is really, especially in the digital world, if, if there's, there's like five mistakes that I see digital painting students make over and over and over and over and over, and over again, and one of them is that their colors are flat. You know, they would use the same blue in this area as they would in the bottom. The exact same blue, same, same. And you, you can't do that because um, it, that's not how light color, you know, that's not how light works. Light is constantly moving, so colors are constantly shifting. So you want to make sure that your colors do this. They transition from a saturated version to a desaturated version, from a lighter version to a darker version, from a cooler version to a warmer version. So that's um, same with this field of, let's look at this field of red. Now remember what I said about ratio? Remember what I said about ratio? Look how much the blue dominates this frame in terms of scale. So it's mostly like 60, 70% blue, blue and blue gray. And just, just enough of this orange uh, and red. It's actually, it's burnt sienna. This might be just a little splash of um, uh, cadmium red right here. Cadmium red is like the reddest red you can buy in a tube. Um, but um, look at how it transitions from orangey, light orange, to dark orange, to reddish orange, and then boom, red hot spot. And then transitions from red hot spot to dark, dark gray red, dark gray red, dark gray red. You see that beautiful movement from here to here here to here to here you see that do, 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 do. that that is the ticket now in traditional medium you you if any of you comment below if any of you guys ever painted watercolor recently you know when you splash watercolor it, it moves by itself that's one of the beautiful things about watercolor i believe this was done in um I be, it looks like water it's probably mixed media watercolor plus acrylic I know you use a lot of acrylic, um, but this I'm guessing is watercolor as well. But watercolor does that bleed. So in, in Photoshop, we want to simulate that. And there's many ways to do that. I know in, um, in Procreate, it's easy to simulate watercolor now. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> but don't just, don't just simulate the technique. Simulate the color. The color has to move from a warmer version to a cooler version. <coughs> Excuse me. From a darker version to a lighter version. So how does it move? Color always has to move. And, um, and then the last thing to look for is look for the highest saturation area. In this piece, it's obviously this red hot spot. The most saturated blue is like right around his head, so that's beautiful placement. Let's look at this sergeant. 
Now, this, this is actually a quite a desaturated image. Now, comment below. What is the most saturated thing? Mm. Excuse me. What is the most saturated thing in this painting? Comment below. I think we could all agree it's the blue, uh, ribbon blue, and that's no accident. The oranges look, they feel more saturated than they are, but these are very gray. They're pastel -y, muted. A lot of the white is showing through. Even this area, this little blue, this, this feels saturated because it's surrounded by dark gray warms. So that's, um, that's a wonderful, uh, this, is, this is what I mean by, by gray. See this, the, why gray is so important is because this, this blue purple would not look saturated unless it's surrounded by warm gray. This is, this is gray. But, but anyway, that, that's the use of gray. Um, so yeah, this thing's the most saturated. One more. Um, let's see. Um, here's the obvious one. The favorite thing is, um, is the birds. This bird is mostly in the blue-gray world. This is Life of Pi, I believe. Mostly blue-gray world and... Um, Uh, this appears saturated. It's it's close right here. This part of the green is, but here not so much. But for sure, this this little peak, this little crown on his head is the most saturated. So look look for that, and um, <clears throat> you want to keep in mind that um, although things may feel saturated, you want to kind of control your saturation. You want to keep it under control. So that's um, that's what to look for. Let me quickly do this demonstration now. I know I was so doing so good on time, and then I. I got lost again. Okay. So I'm going to do a little, little demonstrations here. And um, there's lots of ways to do a color study. Well, there's lots of ways to paint. Um, what I'm going to do, there's lots of ways to do a, a, a film study, lots of ways to do a master copy. What I'm going to do is a color study <clears throat> Excuse me, and I'm going to I'm gonna do a color study, and I'm gonna do it really graphic, and I'm going to just do really basic graphic shapes and do basic movements. I'm gonna not draw, so and uh, my drawing is gonna look terrible. So forgive me. I know um, if you're new to me, um, you just have to take my word for it. I can't draw. <laughs> If I, if I have more than five minutes, I can draw, I swear. <laughs> um, but, but anyway, it's not, it's not about the drawing. I'm just going to quickly draw. <laughs> uh, I'm not even going to worry about these stairs in the background. Or I just want the big mass. The big masses are what? The background, his face, and this foreground gun. Even though it's blurry, it's a big part of the color scheme. I'm just going to quickly block in... Uh, And you know when when you do these studies, you can. Um, what I would do, if you're not recording yourself and trying to t teach at the same time, what I would do is uh, is actually take the time to do a nice drawing, a line drawing. Um, you know that's that's more the illustrative look. Maybe if you want the painterly look, then just ignore that. Uh, probably if you're watching me, um, you you like my work, and I do more, at least right now anyway. Uh, for the last two, two years, I've been drawing movie poster, illustrated look. Probably um, uh, that will change. <laughs> I, always, I always change. Anyway. Okay. So just a rough drawing of the basic shapes. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a mask. <clears throat> and um, I'm just going to quickly... And I'm going to use hard edge shape. OK, 
Okay, I just want the matte. I don't want to worry about the color yet. Let me give it a little bit of color. When in doubt, start with brown. If you're brand, brand new to color, if you're brand, brand, brand new, brand new, comment below if you're like really brand new. You Let's say maybe you've been drawing for a while and you're like, okay, I, I, 2020, I'm going to start painting. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to learn color. If you're brand, brand new, I would start with a uh, orange and blue if as my first two colors. Orange and blue. Burnt sienna and blue. If you were a David Groves student or Nathan Falk student, he would have you start with uh, burnt sienna. Burnt sienna is, is basically orange. It's a, it's a brownie orange. <clears throat> Brown orange and a uh, blue. Those are the two. That's a nice way to start learning how to use two colors. Okay, so I want to... Um, okay, there's one. It's a drawing. I'm gonna drop that opacity. Um. I want this gun on its own layer. This is just this is how how I work, and I learned this method from. T typically, when I work in Photoshop or Procreate now, I use this very very graphic, very graphic. I don't do the, uh, I don't you know do the brush brush, brush 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 thing. I guess you can call it painterly. Oh, there's not, nothing wrong with that. I just. Uh, I like working with uh, really hard edge shapes. And I learned this method from uh, Rob Ruppel. If so, if you're a fan of Naughty Dog, if you're not familiar with Rob Ruppel, Rob Ruppel was the former art director. He's former creative director, the big boss at Naughty Dog. So he taught all the big hitters there like Eitan Zena, um, Shadi Safadi, all the big hitters at Naughty Dog, that whole Naughty Dog style, Last of Us and uh, Uncharted, is is Rob Rubel basically. Comment below if you have Rob Rubel's Graphic LA book. It's an excellent, excellent book. My God, he's another one of my big. I was fortunate enough to take a uh, uh, meet him in person and meet him in person and take a class with him in person as well. I traveled to LA to meet him. Rob Rupo. Okay, so this this scene is mostly orange, right? What is the scene dominant? So let's let's go ahead and do that now. I'm just going to dominantly Uh, pick an orange. Um, hmm, so what would my... That's weird. Oh, and I would encourage you not to c color pick. <laughs> Don't color pick. <laughs> that defeats the whole purpose of color picking. So just just kind of get close, you know. If you if you want, you could have a little color wheel, and I'll put this up in my resources section. Have a little color wheel. So this picture is mostly reddish orange, so we know it's going to be right about here. And let's brush that. Let's take a brush. Hell, I'm going to do the. I'm going to do. Okay, so this is. It's too, it's too bright, right? It's too bright. It's too pastel-y. So bring up your hue set and just kind of get close. You know, like the dominant orange is his face, a little bit of the background. So we know it's not, it's, it's a desaturated browny reddish orange. There you go. Close now, we're close. So I'm just going to kind of, kind of get that side there. I'm going to use my other brush here. This one has a bit more texture. 
Ooh, is it me? Is my Photoshop chugging? Okay, so we're, we're, we're close. I'm close. I feel pretty good about that color. I'm going to go ahead and... Um, so now what what is... Uh, let's look at the background. What is the primary gradation in the background? Meaning, um, how does this color change in the background? Just try to ignore Arnold for a minute. We're, we're going to work front to back to front. Um, if we look at the background, we notice this side is what? It's much darker than the left side, right? You guys see that? It's darker. Now there's, there's steps here and a little, little bit of detail. There's a little accent of blue. We'll put that last. But generally, it's darker, right? It's darker, and we're still a little too... Oops. We're still a little too saturated. So I'm going to turn down the saturation. There we go. There we go. So you guys see that? You see that? We're kind of kind of close. I'm looking at these, really, this field of orangey brown. So we're, we're close. It's not perfect. But we know we're a little bit darker here. So I'm just going to, I'm going to do that. I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to try to merge these. Okay. Make a new layer. Clip it. You can do this in uh, Procreate as well. So um, I'm going to take this color I have. I'm not going to color pick. I'm going to go darker. And we know from last week, monochrome color, if you want to change the brightness, brightness is the most important element of color. We, want to, we have to move all three. And I'm going to use a gradation tool because my, uh, I don't trust my... Uh, My Photoshop's uh, chugging a little bit. Oops. Okay, right away, I know that my color is too... You see, we look at our original. You see, it, mine is too pink. It's too red, right? It's, it's kind of the right value. It's the right brownie, the right saturation, but it's, the temperature is wrong. It's way too red. So let's put some yellow back into... The base coat, there you go. And then this one needs a little bit more red. There you go. Oh, excuse me, uh, orange, more orange. There you go, we'll drop the value a little bit. Okay, now we're cooking. See, we're pretty close, right? You guys see that, we're pretty close. Not not perfect. We need to put Arnold in there too, He's because he's the most saturated. We need to be able to put that in there to compare. Um, we're, we're pretty close. And then we can see here, now let's look at this side. We have the general gradation from right to left. Left to right feels pretty good. Lighter and darker. Now let's look individually. Okay, now look at this field in the left side here, right here. What is the gradation in this field? Well, this is brighter, right? There's some little bright, little little lights here. And up here, to the left is darker, so that's a gradation, lighter to darker. And you see it starts to look a little bit green as, as we go into the blue, right? This is a, t this is a perfect example of a two-color color scheme, orange and blue, which is the, the official color scheme of Hollywood action movies nowadays. So, But n nothing wrong with that. I ain't hating. I like it. You know, as I... Uh, You know, the more the more I work in movie posters, the more I see modern day movie posters. And you know, they they, you know, they um, <laughs> they tend to look a little similar. <laughs> but uh, I, I yeah, I still enjoy it for some reason. You know, I I appreciate it more. I don't know why I appreciate it more. Probably because I know it's, um, you know, when when I come in, I know what to expect. I know that I have to draw this pose ten times. <laughs> <laughs> that this the gun in hand pose I have to become very good at it you know kind of makes it easier on me <laughs> but I, I would love to do a color finish one day that's that's my uh, that's my next short term goal is to do a illustrated color finish 
for somebody. Um, how are we going to do that? So let's, so I'm here. Oops. Let's bring some color back. So I need to go brighter. And I need to go more yellow, right? It's a little bit yellow. The light is yellow orange. So I'm just going to drop that here. Okay, it's, it's close. It's too, our light is more darker and desaturated. So I'm just going to darken it. Okay, bring it back to saturation. Okay, look at that. Now we're cooking. Now we're cooking. You see that? I'm comparing. Okay, we're good. We're good. We're, we're close. Not perfect, but we're close. We're in the ballpark. You know, we're generally kind of kind of in the ballpark. I think it needs to be a little bit darker. Because I want I want actually this his blue, that blue that blue reflected light is much brighter than the shadow, so I'm going to turn that down. This is just a wonderful uh, color design. The more I look at uh, movie screen caps and James Cameron in specific, the more I, I look at uh, James Cameron, um, the more I appreciate his artistry. But there are many, many great, many great color designers, not just James Cameron. Okay, so it goes darker. So uh, we got to get this field now. So I'm going to, and you know, I would do each action on a clipping layer. Just so I can do the hue set, adjust, adjust, uh, layer adjust, image adjust. So I'm going to use my gradation tool. So I know that um, right now um, I'm here. So I need to go darker. I'm going to go a little bit more blue. Let's see what that looks like. Drop the saturation. Let's see what that looks like. I could be wrong. Okay. It's pretty close. I'm going to need to erase. There's a little bit of that, a saturated hotspot right there. It's pretty close. I'm going to play with it to see how close I am. Actually, it looks better when it goes to, yeah, oh yeah. Okay, so it's close. There's some greens in there that I'm not getting, but that's okay. Okay, we're close, we're close. Now I just want to get this little spot of orange. And I'm just going to... Clip it to my background. Um, so I'm here. I need to go more saturated. Bring it towards orange. Let's see what that looks like. Just give me a little accent there. I'm not going to spend too much time on that. It's like a rod or something. Okay, so that needs to be redder. You guys see that? It needs to be redder. Okay, that's close. I'm, I'm going to leave it at that. I need to um, to move on. I think I think this feels it's it's okay. It's okay. We're close. Um, for for a blocking stage, it's pretty good. Now I'm just going to quickly. To the right side now. I'm gonna get a couple of these details in there. I'm let me color pick on my side. Yeah. Oh, it feels pretty good actually. I just color picked from over here. It's always a good thing to do. I don't want them to draw too much attention. And then I want to hit that little bit of blue. So that blue is just straight up blue. But there's a gradation in it. That, so this is too red violet. You see that? It needs to be blue green. There's two forms of blue. Blue can either be obviously blue green or, or violet blue, red blue. Uh, I'm going to 
make a new layer with that little strip of blue there. That feels okay. I'm I'm gonna live with that. This needs some dark gradation as well. I'm gonna put that in there. It's a really important. And I'm just going to grab this color here, the dark blue that I already decided. Use my gradient tool. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that helped a lot. You guys see that, how much that helped? Helped sell. Yeah, okay. Now we're cooking. And I just color picked over here. So I'm, I'm pretty close. Pretty close. I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and merge my work here. You can always change and adjust. Just going to get, merge my background. So now let's let's look at Arnold. So Arnold is he's mostly what? He's mostly dominantly this field of red, reddish orange. So I'm gonna just color pick what I have in the background and just drop it into him. This is him, right? Okay. Right there. All right, that feels pretty close, right? That feels pretty close. So that's I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it at that. Now let's look at the gradations. What are the gradations? How does this orange change from parts of the shape? Uh, okay, well, it's more saturated here. The light is coming from the right, so it's clearly a big shadow on his left. And his jacket is dark, his hair is dark. So what that tells me is I'm gonna make a new shape. I'm gonna make two shapes. One for his face and one for, uh, one for him and one for the shadow. Uh, so I'm going to take this. I'm just going to color pick from the back. That's right. There it is. Oh, there we go. There we go. Color pick from the back. And I just made a mask here. Again, my drawing is going to be very crude and ugly. And his jacket. That is pretty close, right? That is pretty close. It needs some gradation and finesse, but it's pretty. Oops, I want a hard edge. This gun, uh, I'm going to group that as well. This gun is actually dominantly blue. It's mostly uh, that light blue. And I'm going to group his eye with the shadow. I'm just going to ignore that, that bounce light because that's what it is. It's still the shadow side, that little blue. It's called a hair light or a kicker light, rim light. In uh, photography, we call it uh, uh, hair light. in the, um, or, or fill light. Okay, I don't want to fuss too much with, with the drawing. Okay, so just ignoring the gun, ignoring the fill light, I think we filled, now we have two shapes. We have shadow and light. Now let's briefly look at his skin. So this is his skin. This is shadow. Um, let's look at his skin. Uh, so what is the gradation in the skin? Well, we can clearly see this uh, bright spot. So it gets a little bit brighter as it goes to the right, towards his left ear, towards the light source. Darker as it goes to the left. So it's modeling that, that uh, cylinder of the head. And it gets cooler, right? Right here. It's darker, so it's receiving more of the shadow, cool shadow. So that's really the, the main gradation I see. So let's do that. I'm going to, let's use um, 
So I'm here. I'm going to actually now that I put some shadow tone on him, I'm looking at this area and it feels more red and more saturated. So I'm going to. Yeah, look at that. Now we're cooking. Just change that up a little bit. So now I'm going to um, go for that shadow tone. So make it darker. I color pick the base tone. Make it darker. If you move, if you make color lighter or darker, you have to change all three. Uh, I'm going to move them towards the shadow. Let's see what this looks like. Okay, this is way too bright. Way too bright, way too pink. It's not going to work. But uh, it's okay. That's why it's on its own layer. I always work on its own layer there just to keep it... So I, I can adjust it if I need to. All right, so right away, boom, too dark. Okay, so the temperature was right. I think the value was just off, so that looks pretty nice. I like that. I like that, I like that. It's, it needs some, some finesse, but we're, we're, we're pretty close. Now let's get the light and the highlight. So we do the opposite. Pick color, pick the base coat of his skin. Go a lot brighter. Um, as you go brighter, right, color gets washed out. So you want to drop your saturation. And then we're going to move towards a yellow. Move towards the color of the light. Color of the light is, in this case, is a, uh, it's a fire. It's like a lava uh, it's a steel mill kind of area they're in. Okay, so this color is way off. We know that. That's okay. It's way too yellow. There you go. Much better. I'm kind of looking at this general area, his ear. That's kind of the benchmark. This is like the light before the highlight. And this is highlight, his chin. So I'm looking at that. So I'm going to keep that. And then I'm going to pick the light. And then, then I'm going to do his chin. And once I have all three, I have light, dark shadow. Okay, we're looking pretty good. I feel pretty good about this. This color, uh, right, feel pretty good. All right, feels pretty good. It's not perfect. In fact, the shape is terrible. This shape is way off. There you go. So I have them all in separate layers, so I can do this. Now I can fine-tune it should it be a little bit it should be a little bit more saturated yeah okay should it be more yellow green or towards but no temperature wise it was perfect it just needs some finesse i mean it's it's it's, it's close it's not it's not perfect but you know we're kind of just blocking in what we have kind of blocking in but you know doing it's basically what what this stage is it's just a real rough color block in, but I'm doing it in a uh, more, much more graphic way, kind of like the Rob Ruppel uh, graphic way. Well, he would use more vectors, more uh, shape. Um, Uh, we're close. We're close. So now let's look at the field of blue, uh, the shadow field. Now this is more subtle. It's a little bit difficult to see. But here, 
um, clearly we're going to have to include the blue, more, more blue, more saturated blue. So I'm going to start with that. Right? If we look at this field of shadow, his jacket, his jacket, his face, his hair, the biggest, most obvious gradation is, is the left is more blue, right? This side, this side of the jacket is more blue than this one. Much more blue. You can even see little blue accents. So let's do that now. Where is this? Here's the shadow layer. So I have it on its own layer, so I can add clipping mask. I'm just going to take the color I have and just basically boop, crank it over to blue. And you see that? I just turned it to blue. And let's see what this looks like. Could be totally wrong, but I'm just kind of guessing. Okay, so it's it's close. It's pretty close. It's too saturated, in my opinion. I can just tell. It just stands out way too much. And the gun, his glove also have that. So I'm going to turn down the saturation. It's on its own layer. Yeah, much better. Made it a little bit darker, more saturated. So that's nice. Pretty happy with that. Um, where's his hand? Okay, there's his hand. Um, his hand. His hand is mostly this blue. So I'm just going to go ahead and drop that in. I'm going to say it's a little bit more saturated. I'm trying to look at this blue. It's hard to see. I have a big glare in front of me now. The lights in my room are glare. Okay, so this is gun. I'm going to label that. All right, so I think once, as a block-in, we're pretty good, right? Let's take a minute here. We're obviously missing the blue and some some details in here and there, but, you know... As as a color exercise so far, I think I think we're we're in good shape. We're in good shape. Actually, he's, you see his. Um, this needs to go darker here. It needs this needs some of that blue. His jacket. So let's add that. I'm just going to color pick the blue that I already made, not not from the scene. <laughs> okay, and darken that up a little bit. Okay, see that jacket's not popping out enough. Okay, so now we got the jacket and a shadow. The gun is set up. I'm setting myself up to add that blue highlight, which is coming now. Um, yeah, that's the next step. I think um, this hard edge is bothering the hell out of me. I have to. I have to do something with this. Sorry, I know we're not supposed to draw. So I'm going to take this color and this color. Look at the value. It's a 12% brightness. It's a 37. I want that. So let's see if we can just make it bluer. I could be totally wrong. Okay, it's... it's it's not quite sure which way to go, but that's okay. That's why I have my slider. Should it go darker? Yes. Yeah, actually, that's pretty good. Just a little bit darker. You see that? That that neutralized that big, hard, ugly edge. It's bothering the hell out of me. Okay, so now we're good. Um, back to his rim light. Really, once we get his rim light in, we're we're done. So um, just like the highlight on the right side, I'm going to start not with the brightest part of the blue, but um, uh, what's next to it. So I'm just going to give it a nice coat of blue. And uh, the blue that I have, okay, it's not blue at all. It's a violet. So I'm just going to, I'm going to make a blue. So I have, oh, I do have blue somewhere in my, right here. I already made a blue. So let's start with that. I made, oops, where is that? Shadow. Got to go above his shadow. Okay, yeah. So now I'm going above his shadow. And right away, my drawing is in the way. This looks pretty good. 
once I get the bright highlight part of it, then I'll make my final adjustment. But so far, temperature-wise, it's pretty good. Oh, I need to clip it. There, once I clip it, it stays in the place. Look at that. As a blue, that's pretty good. And there's little touches of it here as well on his jacket. But let me uh, address this now. And actually, let me get to the gun. What I'd like to do is bring these two together because they are interconnected. They're the exact same blue. Even though they're on different layers, I want to be very mindful. Ah, damn it. My clip mask needs to be adjusted. You see that? That might mess up my whole scheme there. Okay, now let's do the rim light uh, here. The actual bright part of the rim light. Do I have one made? Oh, I kind of have one made right here. Let's try that. I'm going to go a little bit brighter and towards uh, blue-green. Let's see what that does. Oh, yes, very close. See that? I'm looking at this field. And this little nugget on his cheek there. Very close. This drawing is so ugly, my God. That feels pretty good, actually. You know, it's not perfect. Let me try to adjust it. See if I make it brighter. Does that help? Make it more saturated. Does that help? Nope. Saturation was good. Temperature was... Should I make it more violet? Nope. More green? Nope. My temperature was right. I think I think I'm pretty I'm pretty damn close. Probably what's underneath now needs to be adjusted. So let's do that. What's underneath can go more saturated. Yes. See now we're cooking. That's what it was missing. So I'm gonna fix the gun now. I'm just gonna color pick the blue that I have. Oops. Okay, got that. Now, I should have the same exact highlight. Okay, this one is a lot brighter, actually. So I'm going to need to do this in two stages. This one is way brighter. Because it's probably because it's metal, it's more reflective. It's a flat surface, so it's really picking up this uh, blue light from the distance there. So let me just make it, oops, it needs to be a little darker, more saturated, and more green. Yeah, okay. I could be wrong. That's just my guess. I don't make the final decision until I have the color all the colors blocked in there because the colors work like an orchestra. Okay. Okay, okay. Um, not too... Okay, that's better. That's better. What's missing is the gradation. You see that gradation? Let's see if I can get that in there. This gun gradates from... Oops. Okay, it's, it's close now. It's close. You guys see that? Pretty close. We're pretty close. Even the hand needs some needs some attention now. A little knuckle. But I'm pretty much blocked in. 
now I'm going to get that little, little bit of nuggets of detail on his jacket. So go back to his jacket. Again, use clipping mask. I mean, you don't have to use clipping mask, which is very neat, in my opinion. A little bit of nugget there, a little bit of brown on that. Let's see if I can pick up that little bit of highlight right here. Let's try this. I just picked from the background. Oh, that's working. That's working. A little bit of blue from his gun. Nice. You see that? It's too dark. It's too bright. Better. Just a little bit of more detail in his jacket. So that just looks, makes it feel more full. Yeah, that's really nice. I'm happy with that. Obviously, the drawing, his face just looks like a hot mess. But in terms of a color study, we're pretty good, right? You know, zooming out. We're pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. And okay, only went half an hour over, so we're going to stop here. Uh, quickly review. Let's review. If you're just joining us, we're doing a, uh, talking about two colors today, two colors study. Woo! Um, so basically, you want to start with. Um, a drawing that has a nice ratio of, um, or a subject that has a nice ratio of uh, warm and cool. In this case, I use orange, reddish orange and blue. And you don't have to pick a screen capture, but uh, it's just um, something fun for me that I enjoy. Ideally, you want to set up your own still life, which we'll talk about when I do the future videos. So I block in the field of what... I mostly see this field is mostly orangey brown, so I block that in. And then I block in the general gradations that I see. So in this image, the gradation is from dark on the right side to a little bit brighter on the left. And then add some subtle details and more gradations within each shape. Next, I block in the shape of the main, the main subject, in this case, the character and his gun oh, wait, the, the, the character start start there and then the character has a nice dark shape of a shadow that's around him including his jacket so I group that into shadow and his gun uh, is mostly like this dark blue so I block block those in and then I get just like the background start with the subtle transitions and gradations in the face you know I'm not trying to draw I'm not trying to match color. What I'm trying to do is, is observe how the color moves. Where, where does it go from warm to cool, light to dark? That's all I did here. I'm trying to match the color gradation. I'm not trying to copy or do a full thing. So now his shadow has to be addressed. Put more cools. The shadow is cool. Uh, put that bounce light, kicker light. Small details, and then finally the gun has that little bit of uh, kicker light on the gun. You know, it can keep going from here, but that's that's basically it. So thank you for watching today. We're going to stop for questions here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I really appreciate if you guys are still with me. Thank you very much. I know it's. Uh, I hope. I hope you. Um, I hope uh, you can review this and do this exercise yourself. It's. It's a lot of fun. Um, and I. I just chose Terminator because it had cool colors, and I just wanted an excuse to draw Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> I mean, you could pick any movie you like. I would start with. Um, I would start with. If you can do screen caps, it's not in there. Um, God, I just thought of a movie off the top of my head.
A Dread has excellent. This is a remake Dread 2000. Uh, this is Green Red. I don't recommend starting with Green Red. Maybe make this your second one, but definitely uh, choose Dread. It's 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 an okay movie. Uh, Blade Runner, and he, Blade Runner is excellent. My God, lots of blue and blues and oranges. Um, and there's so many, um, so many. Um, what do you call that? So many, uh, so much screen caps available online of Blade Runner. Definitely start with Blade Runner. See, see, look how obvious the color schemes are. Obviously, blue and orange. Mostly blue, an accent of orange. This is uh, this is monochrome. It's all blue. A little bit of yellow. So definitely start there. Blade Runner is good. Um, um, any Guillermo del Toro. I love Guillermo. Eh, Guillermo del Toro. Um, Pan's Labyrinth, Hellboy Two. I'm trying to look for Pan's Labyrinth. Here we go. Lots of beautiful. I didn't. I didn't quite screen cap the whole movie yet. But lots of beautiful monochromes. This is a monochrome. So th those are just some st starting points. Um, and again, I'll put these resources in my uh, resources page. So let me stop for questions here. Hello, Lori. Hello, Mr. Ipek. Hello from Poland. Thank you for joining us. I believe you're the first Poland, Poland uh, live viewer. Thank you. Hello, Brazil. Ciao. Hi, Chris. I'm watching from Medicine Hat, Alberta, Canada. Where is that? I've never heard of it. What a town. What a town name. Tim asks, why did you move to Thailand? Oh, that's a good question. I started as a vacation and I'm kind of staying here now. Personal reasons. Isaac says, sort of stuck with grayscale and can't branch out. Yeah. Oh, man, Isaac. Join the club. Isaac, I believe what Isaac's referring to is grayscale Photoshop which is how everybody starts using Photoshop, including me, uh, but I was never happy with it. Um, um, which is a valid way to start, nothing wrong with it, but uh, being able, having the ability to start with color is why, is why I always say start with monochrome. Once you can master blue, only blue paintings, once you can master only orange paintings, once you can master only green paintings and only red paintings, you know, then you could easily add blue and orange, red, green, uh, orange and violet. Yeah, so, so re and that's, I, I made a course called Laws of Color, Volume 1. Uh, it's, 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 uh, that my entire course is it's three hours long, I believe, two hours long. It's, it's, uh, that whole course is about how to monochrome, how to make monochrome palettes. And I'll, I'll talk more about that here on these live streams as well. Uh, let's see. Uh, hello, Mr. Dutch. Guyam. Hello, hello, De Walker. Hello, Isaac. Joker has beautiful blue. Oh my God, Isaac says. Uh, I believe he's talking about the 2019 Joker. Has excellent color design. Oh my goodness, Ex excellent color design. Oh, I didn't, I didn't use it here because it doesn't have quite. I wanted to use, you know, the classic Hollywood blue, orange blue. Um, it has has very strange greens and. Uh, has what, what we call tertiary colors. These colors over here, not quite primaries. Um, but Joker is great to study. A bit, I would say Joker is a little bit more advanced because it uses tertiary, not primary. But um, you know, once you're comfortable with the primaries, go for it. Hello, Lori. Thank you, Lori, for watching live. You're welcome. Nathaniel says this is great stuff. Thank you, Cupcake. Thank you. Isaac says makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, this is this is so much fun. I mean, I love talking about this stuff. Antares says the sash correct talking about John Sargent. Thank you so much. Please do more digital painting. Oh, yeah, I will. I plan to do um, at least one live stream a week. Um Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I always struggle with color. Oh, join the club. Will says I struggle with color. Yeah. Join the club. It is it is a beast. Hopefully that's why I want to keep making this kind of content here. 
Will this be um, P? Will this be uploaded? Yes. Archive, yes. You phone, yes. I have to say, I watch your stuff till I'm often feel incredibly relaxed because you have a, such a calm way <laughs> of teaching. <laughs> Mr. BD says, I watch your stuff to learn, but I feel relaxed because of your calm way. Oh, I really appreciate that, uh, BD. I've had a lot of comments about people say, um, my voice is relaxing. Oh, I really appreciate that. Um, Carl Lipinski says, the nose is too short. Yeah, the drawing is all bad. I know. Mark Tolver says, are there any particular paintings or artists that you recommend looking at in terms of color studies? Oh, Nathan Fawkes. Mark Tolver asked a great question. Are there any particular paintings or artists that you recommend? Oh, you mean master artist? Oh, Edgar Payne, number one on the top of my list. Edgar Payne, uh, Dean Cornwell, Wyeth, number... Wyeth is in my top five. Wyeth is an absolute color savage. And for the illustrators out there, David Grove. David Grove is one of the kings of... Kings of Burnt Sienna Blue. Burnt Sienna Blue is... is is where, where it's at. So I would definitely start there. Uh, Sargent's wonderful. He uses very realistic muted colors. So it takes a bit more advanced to look at his stuff, but definitely definitely use Sargent. So that's, that's your list. And Monet. I like Sargent, Edgar Payne, N.C. Wyeth, and Monet. Those are probably my top four. Zorn is nice too. Latte Jazz. Hey, Chris, I missed some content earlier, but duochrome, do you extend the palette the same way you would monochrome? Yes, exactly. That's what this whole lesson was about, was that, um, um, and if we, um, Latte Jazz, that's a great question. Do you make, do you basically, do you mix duochrome colors the same way you mix monochrome? Exactly. Let's do that now. So I'm going to make this palette. I'm just going to color pick the palette I have. And if we see the color, does this look familiar? Does this look familiar? If you've seen my other uh, color videos, you'll know this. This is the entire, my teaching philosophy is learn to mix. Um, if you can mix one color at a time correctly, you, you, you're good. You will... You, you will be able to, you can control one, you can control two, you can control two, you can control three and four. Um, well, that's the same color. <laughs> so you see that? It's basically, this is the same color. These two are the same. This is basically... Uh, what, 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 this is basically two colors. Yeah, but uh, the mixing is exactly the same way. That's why I always say um, um, start, start with monochrome. You know, make, make a bunch of orange paintings. Make a bunch of only black paintings. But, you know, use, use my stuff and use... Uh, use that. this, is, this is what I call the laws of color, which I learned from Steve Houston, how to mix colors properly. Um, and... Uh, Fimox says, watching from the Netherlands. Oh, wow, thank you. I have many, uh, many good friends from the Netherlands, one of my favorite countries I haven't visited yet, so really appreciate it. Cupcake says, Chris, how do you feel about the color palette ch challenge? People post on social media, artists pick four to six colors and make a drawing out of them. I haven't heard about it. Oh, Cupcake Admin, if you could post a link somewhere, that would be, I would like to see that color palette challenge. Yeah, why not? I mean, um, my philosophy is always fewer the better. You know, instead of, you know, instead of 10 values, try to make five value drawings. Instead of, you know, five, five colors, try to make three or two. You know, my philosophy is always mi minimum, but yeah, why, why not? Um, oh, hello from New York. Yeah, I believe it's afternoon for you. Yeah, I saw Monet's exhibition in London. Wow. Mark Tolver says, saw Monet's in London. Man, you know, I, um, Mark Tolver says, he saw Monet in person and it's amazing to look at. You know, I really, um, I myself didn't appreciate Monet and, 
his period, the Impressionists, because, you know, I always appreciate uh, 19th century drawing, right? I want to see Bougereau, Caravaggio, uh, Rembrandt. You know, I like Rubens drawing, drawing, drawing. And when I first saw Monet in books and on the computer, you're like, oh, yeah, that's nice. It's colorful, but there's no drawing, right? There's no, <laughs> there's no figures. But, man, when you see them in person, they come to life. It is... It is stunning. Like you can see like the starry night. I saw a starry night in person in San Francisco and it literally like does this. It's unbelievable how he's, I mean, it's, there's a reason why they're worth a couple million dollars. <laughs> they literally are, it's, they're meant to be seen in person. All right. So thank you for joining me. Thank you for all, all the comments. Um, if, if you're still here, make sure you pick up some of the, uh, resources, including some of the brushes that I use and my color palettes that I make, um, other videos as well, and PDFs on my website, drawwithchris.com slash subscribe, and you can enter your email, you can get instant download there, and I'm going to put all of these resources in this video in that download page eventually. So thank you guys for watching, I really appreciate it, and um, the next episode I'm going to use traditional media, I'm going to do the same thing, but with watercolor, I believe, I'm going to use... Um, how to do traditional media. I don't want to ignore those guys. And then we'll keep doing another color digital painting after that. I believe that's the plan. All right, thank you guys. I will see you in the next video.